Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you're going to build upon what you learned in the last episode, and that means answering questions like, should you log every message to the same file or use different files? What about logging to the database? And what about receiving an email whenever an error message happens? So let's get right after it. Back in the logging project, open up the log4j2 XML file. And just a quick note, first of all, this might be log4j2 specific, or it might be a specific configuration file, but the same principles apply for every logging library. Log4j2, log4j1, logback, doesn't matter. Same principles. Second, as always, these aren't strict rules. Simple guidelines that I found useful over the course of a couple of projects, so make up your own mind. But in any case, what you'd like to have, or what you might want to have, is to log to different log files at the same time in your application. And a very simple and basic set of log files is to have a status log file and an error log file. The error log itself only contains error or warn messages, so messages that need human intervention, and you can simply monitor that log file and send out alarms or whatever to your developers or to your ops guys. And the status log has info log messages and whatever, and you could also even split it up even more into a trace log file, but for now, just assume you have two log files. And as you can see in the name of the log file, you also want to have a date. So you have an error log for every specific date or day in the year. And depending on if you work in a bigger company or in a smaller company or whatever, it could be you have multiple apps. And it's a nice idea to put the app name in front of the log file. And then also if your app consists of multiple instances, you could also put the instance name here. And of course, things are a bit different if you're using like a log server, like Graylog or whatever, then you'd put these into properties. But in any case, let's keep it simple here. So simply create a log file, which looks like that, and also a status log, like so. Now, how do you go about that? Simple, you open up a web browser and then simply put in log4j2 file appender, right? You open up the documentation, scroll down a bit, and you'll see there's a ton of different appenders. So log4j2 can write into the database or to Cassandra or whatever, but you're interested in a rolling file appender. That's the appender that will basically go and create a new log file every day for you. Then scroll down and as a good start, it's always nice to just take whatever they have in the documentation. Actually, you don't need the whole configuration. You only need the rolling file appender in here. Right, copy back to the configuration file. Then let's just rename it to error log. Also down here, make sure to reference the error log. Right, like so. Then we said we wanna have a file which is called error log, that's fine. That is the currently, the file that is currently being written to. And then at night, you want to roll over the file and you might do something like the year, the month, the day, right? This I'll explain in a second. And then you just go error log, right? Error dot. And then you basically get this output file. The pattern layout, simply use, when you're starting out, simply use the default pattern layout that the documentation provides of your logging library. Usually you wanna keep it as close as possible to the syslog format or to whatever these guys recommend, but more on that later. Now, policies, you can see there's a time-based triggering policy, which simply means create a new log file every day. And there's also a size-based triggering policies if the log file grows too large. And for testing for now, I'll just put one kilobyte in here so that we can see the size-based triggering policy in action. And it will create a new log file and increase this counter here. So you'll get error 1.log, error 2.log, error 3.log every time it creates a new log file. And last but not least, there's also the concept of filters because remember, we you only want to log error messages and warn messages. And for that, I have in my clipboard already a filter section and I can paste it in here. If not, just read up on it on, in the documentation online. And as you can see, 
there's a threshold filter, level error, on match accept, on mismatch deny. So it only accepts error messages and deny messages. And as a first exercise, I want you to think, what about warn messages? I also want you to modify the code so that this filter also locks out warn messages. Okay, good. Now we have the rolling file appender. It's referenced properly. In the last episode, we created a ton of log statements. So let's simply run the My Crazy Logging app. The application boots up. And as you can see, there's a ton of log messages printing out, printed out to the console. And then when you, and you have to scroll down a bit, synchronize the directory again, you'll see there's already a couple of, actually let's quickly stop the application. There's a ton of log files being created. You have the error log, and as you can see, there's only an error message in here. No info, no warn, no debug, no nothing. So that worked. And already the rolling file appender rolled over a couple of times, seven times in total, and simply created zipped, gzipped files with the previous log messages. Great, so everything worked. And the date is here, error is here, just as expected. Now, as another exercise, I want you to go back. We fixed the error log now, and I want you to create the same thing, a rolling file appender, but for the status log. So to do status log, that's for you. Put that in. Looks very similar. Instead of status log here, just put status status. Play with the threshold filter and see what happens. But the last thing I want to show you is imagine, and it depends on your environment. If you're working in a big team and now you have an error log file and the ops guys monitor that error log file and your server or some log application sends out emails, all is good. But what if you're working in a small shop and you want to send out an email yourself? Then again, open up Firefox or any browser you like and scroll up a bit again on this very long page and you'll find something hopefully like SMTP appender, right? And that's the appender which simply sends out an email to you when an error message happens. Again, simply copy that, put it into your appender section and now you can see you have a subject, you have an email address that the mail is being sent to, a from address, local was 25, 50, whatever. And you just put in the values you have from your local SMTP server, or if you're using a service like Amazon Simple Email Service, you put these values here. And I'll explain buffer size in a second, because first make sure also to reference the appender again down here. But then what does buffer size mean? And the trick is, that Log4J2 also Logback, they will not send you an email for every error log message. They will actually buffer these error log message messages and only send you an email for say 10 or 20, or in this case, 50 error messages. So that means you get them with a certain delay. And if you don't want that delay, and if you wanna get hit by emails, put it to one. Otherwise, just play around with it. And that's the general recommendation for every appender be it a file appender, a simple file appender, or a more complex asynchronous appender, just play around with the appenders and keep things very simple. Congratulations, you now know your way around the basics of logging with Java. And of course, there's more advanced options like using a log server, a log application like Graylog, and we'll cover these options in the next episode. So let's get right after it.